Hello everyone, and yes, your ears and eyes do not deceive you, you are indeed watching a brand new Kerbal Space Program video from me. And what are we doing? Well, I thought I'd, in spirit at least, enter the official KSP Nova C Lunar Lander Challenge, a link to which is in the description, but basically the challenge is to launch a replica of the Nova C Lunar Lander, which as you can see I already did before I started filming, and recreate its mission of going to the moon via a Falcon 9 rocket. This isn't a no-stakes competition either. Squad have actually partnered with Intuitive Machines, the people who built the real lander, and they're offering the winner of this competition an invitation to join their team in their brand new and modern mission control center in Houston, Texas for the real Nova Sea moon landing. You can be as rough or precise as possible, but some key points to aim for to get the big points are to, well, firstly build an analog to the Nova Sea, which I think I've done a pretty good job of considering that neither mods nor DLC are allowed for this challenge, launch it aboard a Falcon 9 rocket, which I'm in the process of working on, and perform a soft landing in the canyons north of the far side crater on the Mun, which is the in-game analogue to the actual real landing site. And that's where I'll be aiming for. Now, unfortunately for me, this competition is only available to people who live in one of the 50 United States of America and the District of Columbia, which means I can't possibly win or even enter this competition. Oh well. Hopefully perhaps then this mission can serve as a good inspiration or as a good guide for any of my American viewers. Another reason I can't win is that while I'm not using any modded parts, DLC or cheat codes, I'm still using visual mods and stuff like Kerbal Engineer Redux, which I'm only using to enhance the aesthetic of this video, but even these mods are not allowed for this challenge. Only use the absolute barest, most vanilla install of KSP for this if you want to have a go at this competition. Oh, and custom flags are allowed, so you can still adorn your Falcon 9 with SpaceX insignia, as I have done here. I've also put the Intuitive Machines logo on the fairing because I feel like that's what they would do. <laughs> Anyway, the Falcon 9 is done. This is a very special Falcon 9 because it was built with SpaceX and Laon Aerospace. So both the SpaceX logos, Falcon 9 logo and the Laon Aerospace logo are on that first stage. And there it is. I think I did a pretty good job getting the aesthetic Nine, right. So, oh, I'm eight, joined by my seven, my guest six, announcer at SpaceX. Five, Let's get that official four, stream three, UI. And, uh, two, uh, well, I'll hand one, it over to you, shall I, for the, zero, uh, the launch. That's a beautiful launch. What a beautiful launch right there. All nine of those swivel and I mean Merlin engines are burning well. And from the looks of things, I would say that stage one chamber pressures are definitely nominal. Stage one chamber pressures are nominal. Yeah, thanks. I, I just said that. Anyway, I'll just uh, I'll silence the, uh, the SpaceX announcer for a little bit. And uh, yeah, uh, I've not actually done a Falcon 9 recreation in ages. I think the last time I did it was in 2017. That wasn't really a proper Falcon 9 recreation. It's a shame I couldn't use DLC parts to get really accurate landing legs, but hey, maybe that's a topic for a future video where I can have a go using the uh, robotic Falcon parts. Falcon 9 oh. has successfully lifted off moments ago. We throttled the engines down in preparation for max Q or maximum aerodynamic pressure. Thank which you. Which yep. we should oh. see in just a few seconds oh. here. Yeah, the supersonic. All right, thank you. Thank you for that. Sorry, I was interrupted just then by my co-announcer. But yes, uh, in view of the fact I couldn't use robotic parts, I had to use the uh, biggest landing legs that come in stock KSP. And we're pretty much ready to uh, cut the main engines, create a quick save, and then stage. Yes, unfortunately for this Falcon 9 replica... Whoop, a bit of a... Bit of a spin there, let's just cut the engines and uh, try the boost back burn one more time. Yes, unfortunately for uh, this Falcon 9 replica, it doesn't really work, like, properly. Like, you either have to sacrifice the first stage and just, you know, fly it like a normal expendable rocket, or you lose the upper stage and land the first stage. The way I get around this situation is just create a quick save, land the booster, and then reload that quick save and, you know, do the rest of the mission. I did uh, try throttling up the upper stages then just to see if it would just get to space on its own without me needing to control it, and I could do both halves of the mission if that makes sense but uh, no once it left physics range it just it just disappeared it just got terminated which is a shame i know you can do falcon 9s in stock at ksp as in land the first stage and keep the upper stage but this is not one of those and i don't really know how to do that but i need to look into it because i know i think tape tape gaming has done that possibly i need to really look into it because i think it'd be nice for, it would be a nice challenge for me to try at some point but here i am performing the uh, suicide burn hover slam i thought it'd be cool to just use the uh, the single central falcon 9 engine but i quickly realized very close to the ground that i did not have enough thrust rate ratio to pull off the landing so i had to do some uh, 
panic. Uh, quick activation of the uh, the outer eight engines just to slow myself down sufficiently. And uh, oh, here we are. Thank you. you Thank you, everyone. Call out there, and from the cheers behind me, uh, yep. we have successfully landed Thank this Falcon 9. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, I was going to redo that and try to get it, like, better, but I thought that was just so funny. Like, my fuel hit zero at the exact moment, and I <laughs> actually slammed into the ground so fast and somehow survived. I just thought that was hilarious. So I, I decided to keep that as the landing I would use for this video. But now we must go back to the quick save I created and uh, do the rest of the mission. And wow, doesn't the fairing look good? I'm amazed how like how far simple little decals can can you know enhance how far they can enhance your rocket. Really should have scripted that sentence, I guess. And I'm using a single swivel engine because I'm using that as the uh, Merlin analog. I think you know the nine swivels was the perfect thrust weight ratio for the first stage, and uh, so it just worked pretty well for it. Oh. There you can see the fairing halves popping off. We have had successful well, fairing they're not, deployment. They're not really fairing halves, are they, love? They're, they're kind of just exploded everywhere. Yeah, I forgot to turn on uh, the clamshell deploy for the fairing. Really, a lot of mistakes were made in this mission, but now you get a good look at my Nova C lander. I mean, I haven't deployed the landing legs just yet, but I will in due course. I'm actually just going to just do a massive big burn with the Falcon 9 second stage to deplete it of its fuel in the real world. That will then just eventually decay and fall back to the Earth's atmosphere because this is KSP, it will just stay there for all eternity. Oh, well. Anyway, the reason I did a really big burn with the Falcon 9 second stage and get ourselves into a pretty eccentric orbit, really, rather than just getting into a circular curve in orbit, because, and I think this is correct, but I'm not quite sure, so please someone correct me if I've got this wrong, but I think the actual real mission will involve a translunar injection burn that is kind of done with the Falcon 9 second stage, but it won't actually quite reach the moon. The lander will then separate from the Falcon 9, will then make a full orbit around the Earth, and then do another burn at Earth periapsis to raise its apogee to intercept the moon. I think that's the flight plan, based on the description that Squad have written for the official challenge. Uh, they, um, the wording was a bit confusing. The wording was that you have to do a gravity assist around Kerbin in order to get to the Mun, which uh, I think that's this. I'm not sure, but I think I think that's what. This is what that, that sentence meant. Anyway, long in the past now, with the beauty of time warp and video editing, we are now at the point where we are circularizing around the Mun. And now we are circularized around the Mun. And as you, as you can see, we're at tilted orbit. That just makes it easier to aim for our target, which is uh, that, if you imagine that crater is like a tadpole, we're aiming for that tadpole's tail. I could just highlight it, right? Like this a video. Uh, there, I've highlighted it there. Well, there's, there's an arrow on screen as well. Oh, and look at that. There's a chicken nugget. Isn't that fun? <laughs> da -da -da -da. <laughs> anyway, moving along to something a bit more relevant to the mission. Here we are about to commence our landing burn. You can see the crater, not the crater, sorry, the canyon is up ahead. So just eyeballing it. Yeah, now looks about the right sort of time to initiate the landing burn. It sounds like the game sound has cut out as well. Yes, I'm still having teething problems with the audio capturing properly in Kerbal Space Program, but it will return shortly. Now I've deployed the landing legs. They are a bit... Uh, you know, they don't, they don't look that similar to the real landing legs on the real Nova C, but I couldn't use ro the robot parts from the Breaking Ground DLC. I actually did make some what I believe to be fairly cool and, you know, correct looking landing legs, but I used the DLC parts because when I first designed this craft, I didn't realize that DLC wasn't allowed. I then noticed that little clause and had to, you know, just replace them with the, I guess, the, the small stock lander can landing legs. So it doesn't look as good, but it is, you know, in keeping with the rules of the challenge. And speaking of the rules of the challenge, we've now got to do a few fulfillments of those. First of all, I just zoomed out to check I was definitely inside the canyon, which I think I am. And then we're just going to do a bunch of science. Uh, I'm not sure what a bunch of science is, so I ran a few Mystery Goo experiments. I ran a few of the, the little experiments. And that's it. The mission is over. And that would normally be where the Nova C, you know, mission would end. But here at Lown Aerospace, we play for keeps. That's right. You guys want to exclude Lown Aerospace from entering your competition? Well, that's it. I've got to, I'm just going to have to show you guys up. This is not just a mere Mun soft landing. Oh, no, 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 sir. We're going to be doing a return mission. That's right. I've got an experiment capsule with admittedly quite a bit of part clipping. I had to kind of hide this into the lander can for the surprise so I could truly 
truly dab on intuitive machines. Is dab something that the kids still say? I don't know. I feel like it isn't. We are we are totally we're totally yeeting these experiments back to Kerbim. Is yeet even a word? I, I say that now. That was 2018 or 2017 I first heard yeet make its way into the common discourse and I feel like even that's now. I'm just so out of touch. I turned 28 this year, which I know I, I like to think is still fairly young, but it's 10 years from when I was 18. That's right. I can do maths, me. And uh, yeah, I just I'm not not one of the kids anymore. Not one of the kids anymore. So uh not sure what, what kind of statement I was trying to make, really. Uh, here we are, re-entering. Uh, so something exploded. I wasn't too worried. The parts we've got here are fairly hardy when it comes to surviving re-entry. And we're only coming from, you know, the Mun's height, which is uh, not very high. So I didn't think we'd need too much in the way of thermal protection. And everything was fine. The parachute has deployed. And... That's it, actually. The parachute has now deployed. We lost the battery. I'm just looking at it, trying to figure out what exploded. Yeah, we lost the battery, didn't we? But it doesn't matter. We don't need, you know, electrical charge now because everything is just going to happen by itself. And it's irrelevant anyway. We've got a solar panel on this thing that's uh, getting sunlight to keep things charged. And now the descent obviously becomes very, very slow. So luckily through the power of video editing, I can fade across to the actual point of splashdown. Here we go. Three, two, one. There we are, SpaceX announced. Do you want to say anything? No. I guess they've gone. I guess even SpaceX were embarrassed by how much Lown Aerospace has showed them up. Look at that, 310 science earned. Intuitive machines, when you do this mission for real, I'd like to see you get 310 science. I don't think you can. I think you've got it in you. you just got to submit to Lown Aerospace. Maybe next time consider allowing the United States of England land to compete. Oh, by the way, there's an end screen. The video's over. Oh, my patrons are there. Thank you, and bye.